Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a polynomial expression. x to the power 18 plus x to the power 12 plus 1. Given that x plus 1 over x is equal to square root of 3. So I'll be presenting two methods. And here's the first one. For my first method, I'll multiply both sides by x. Obviously, x does not equal 0. We know that, right? Because it doesn't satisfy the equation. So I can easily multiply both sides by x without hurting the equation. That gives me x squared plus 1 equals square root of x, square root of 3x. It's better than making a common denominator, even though it looks like 1. It's a little easier. Now, how can I use this quadratic? Did I say quadratic? Yes. How can I use this quadratic to evaluate this 18th degree polynomial? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the obvious and use the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and write it as a full quadratic and use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula tells me something interesting. I know some folks are going to like this because I'm kind of leaning more towards the other side, which I'm going to tell you in a little bit. Anyways, x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 3 minus 4ac, which is 4, and then that's what we get. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, it's less than 0, so the square root of this negative number is going to be a non-real complex number. That's right. So complex number folks are going to like this, hopefully. Square root of 3 and square root of negative 1 is basically i or negative i, but since we have a plus minus sign, and I know I write it differently, the plus minus sign is going to take care of the uh, you know, the two different values. So I can just write square root of 3 plus minus i divided by 2, and that is my x value. Now, I didn't find the expression yet. I found the x value, but guess what? I can just go ahead and plug it in. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens, just real quick. And which value do you want to use? Doesn't matter, I guess, right? Let's just use the positive. Let's keep it positive. Take this and raise it to the 18th power. And then the same number, make sure you're using the same number, so be consistent. And then raise it to the 12th power, and then just add 1. So that's what we're looking for. But guess what? Does anybody want to raise this gigantic expression? Like, do you want to expand it? Like, do you want to raise this to the 18th power? I don't think so. So let's do something else. And that's called the polar form. Because these are complex numbers. So let's use polar form. What is polar form? The polar form is ba basically writing a complex number using trigonometry, right? So let, let x equal square root of 3 plus i over 2. So now I'm going to turn it into trigonometric form. How can I do that? I can just separate these first, square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. And now I'm looking for, wait, before I look for any number, how about finding the modulus? Obviously, I could also use z, by the way, but I just wanted to use x because it's fun. Anyways, we have x in the equation, so that's why. Uh, what is the modulus of x, the absolute value? The absolute value for complex numbers is a little bit different, right? So what is the absolute value of x? It is the square root of 3 over 2 squared plus 1 half squared and then square root of that sum. And guess what? That's 1. Well, if you knew a little bit of trigonometry, you would know that Square root of 3 over 2 is the cosine of an angle, and 1 half is the cosine or the, the sine of the same angle, or vice versa. That way, uh, you know that it's going to be 1 all the time. But anyways, it's good because I don't have to take out the modulus. It's already 1. So now we can do the following. I can just go ahead and take x and write it in trigonometric or polar form. Square root of 3 over 2. Now, here's the trigonometric form in general. Z, if Z is a complex number, you can write it as the modulus or the absolute value of Z, multiply by the cosine of an angle alpha plus I times the sine of the same angle. So those two angles have to be the same, but notice that cosine goes first. So the real part comes from cosine multiplied by something. In our case, it's 1. So square root of 3 over 2 is the cosine of which acute angle. You definitely want to keep it cute. I mean acute. So let's write it as cosine pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2. And uh, the second part, let's write it as sine of pi over 6. Of course, I'm supposed to use the same number, so it should be written like this. Okay, now, 
Once it's in the polar form, obviously, very easy to raise it to the 18th power. Let's go ahead and do that. How do you raise something in polar form to the, well, I can never say this, the moi, or is it the moiver? However you're gonna say it. Uh, just raise this number to the 18th power, and that's fairly easy to do. All you have to do is multiply the modulus, or raise the modulus to the 18th power, but we don't have a modulus, it's one. So just multiply the argument by 18, and that gives you cosine of three pi, plus i sine 3 pi. So that is x to the power 18. And guess what? Cosine of 3 pi is the same as cosine of pi because you just subtract pi, uh, 2 pi from it. And that is equal to negative 1. And sine of 3 pi is 0. So x to the 18th power becomes negative 1, which is really cool, right? How about 18th power? 18th power, I mean 12th power. You know what I'm talking about, right? Or you're just going to multiply by 12. That should be easy too. And if you do, you're going to get x to the power 12 equals cosine of 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. Because pi over 6 times 12 is equal to 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is the same as cosine of 0, which is equal to positive 1. And sine of 2 pi is 0, right? Just like sine of 3 pi. Therefore, we get the following. x to the 18th power plus x to the power 12 plus 1. x to the 18th power is equal to negative 1 x to the power 12 is positive 1, and positive 1 is positive 1. All the time, the answer is 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And you expect to get something nicer with the second method, right? Let's see what happens. So, here's the thing. I'm trying to evaluate this expression, but let me go ahead and use the quadratic. It's easy. We already got that. Now, from here, I'm going to isolate x squared. Can I do that? Yes. Now, I got a linear value for x squared, and I'm going to keep using it. For example, if I wanted to evaluate x cubed, by the way, uh, the 18th power and the 12th power should kind of ring the bell because they're both multiples of 6 or multiples of 3, whatever you want to call that. x to the third power is x squared times x, but x squared is root 3x minus 1. Multiply by x, you get square root of 3x squared minus x. And then now, square root of 3x squared or x squared can be replaced with square root of 3x minus 1. And then if you distribute, you're going to get 3x minus square root of 3 minus x. From here, x cubed is going to be 2x minus square root of 3. I know this is not very impressive, but guess what? What is x? I can write x cubed in terms of x, so let's go ahead and plug it in. So x cubed is equal to 2 times. Now, what was the value of x that I used? Remember, square root of 3 plus i over 2. If you want to use the negative one, that's perfectly fine too. Let's go ahead and use square root of 3 minus i over 2 minus square root of 3, the 2 cancels out, and I get, and the square root of 3 cancels out, and I get negative i. If you use the other one, you would get positive i, but guess what? That doesn't matter, because I'm going to find x to the 6, which is x cubed squared, and it doesn't matter. Negative i to the second power is i squared, and that is equal to negative 1. So, x to the 12 plus x to the 18th, I just rushed them, plus 1, x to the 12 is x to the 6 squared, x to the 18 is x to the 6 to the third plus 1. This is negative 1. This is negative 1. 1 minus 1 plus 1 gives us 1 again. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.